welcome back to Cakes Cooking and More's Halloween special, Seven Days of Scary Treats. Today is another really easy one. This is a white chocolate covered pretzel. So let's see what we need. So for this recipe, you need some white chocolate chips, some pretzel sticks, um, your little mold. This one is a Jack Skellington. You need something to put your food color in. You just need black. And then, of course, you need um, a piece of parchment paper. So the first thing we're going to do is heat up our melt chocolate here. And one of the ways that you can figure out how much chocolate you need is to fill your little cavities. And there's going to be quite a bit of air down in there in spaces, and that's fine because remember we're putting our pretzels inside. So you just need kind of an estimate. So I fill them up and then that gives me a good idea of how many I'm actually going to need so that I'm not making too much chocolate. Which actually never turns out bad anyway because the kids will eat it. But <laughs> I've got so many desserts this week that I'm kind of trying to uh, limit how many extras I'm making so that I'm not making quite so many. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put half of this into our glass and leave the other half to reset our chocolate if we accidentally overheat. So we're going to heat this at 30 second intervals and we're probably only going to need to heat it one, maybe two times. So we're going to put this in the microwave and then we'll be back. Okay, so after our first 30 seconds, you can see they're starting to melt, but not quite enough. So we're going to do another 30 seconds. Alright, now that those are really, really melted, we're going to put our unmelted chocolate in and just give it another stir. And because these have not been heated, the hot chocolate will melt them but the unheated ones will force our chocolate back into temper so that it will set nice and hard, firm. That's not really hard, but firm. And hold a shape and not be all melty in your hand. You just want to make sure that you mix that until all of the lumps are gone. It, has, it does take a minute or so, so just go ahead and take the time to mix really well. going to take this and just pour a little bit into each of our little Jack's heads. And remember not to fill it too much because we're putting stuff inside so we're not actually filling the entire cavity with chocolate. Alright, now we're just going to use the end of our spatula kind of knock it into the whole shape so that we have the whole bottom covered. Once you've got that moved around, you do want to tap it a few times. One, that helps get any air bubbles out that you have, and two, it helps fill in any gaps. Alright, so I've got pretzel sticks. You can use mini pretzels, whatever you want. And I'm just breaking them into small bite-sized pieces and dropping them inside each one. You can decide how much you like, but the salty with the sweet has a nice little taste to it, plus that little bit of crunch inside the white chocolate is quite nice. But you have to decide for yourself how much you want in there. Alright, so you can see I've added quite a few pretzels to mine. Like I said, I like that salty crunch in contrast to my white chocolate. Alright, so you should be able to just stir your white chocolate and have it ready to go. You shouldn't need to reheat at this point. It takes a little while to set. Alright, so we're just going to take our white chocolate and finish filling those cavities. Try not to overfill because it does tend to make a mess if you do. When you start getting really low, you're probably going to have to sit it down and kind of scrape everything back down. Get that last little bit out of there. Alright, once you have them fairly close, again, just use your spatula 
And you really don't have to do much, just kind of poke at it a little bit and it'll start to flow over to your sides and fill in your gaps. You can see I'm not really having to shove it, I'm just kind of encouraging it to move in the direction I want it to. And of course I warned you guys not to overfill them and then I overfilled some. Okay, once you've got those full, if you've got some that are a little over full like this one, but then you've got one right next to it that's a little low, you can just kind of scoop up a little bit on your spatula and move it over. Okay. Got one more, it's a little bit low. All right, now we're gonna let these sit. Now you can let them sit on your counter. It takes 10, 15 minutes at most. You should be able to touch them and then not be tacky anymore, which is uh, another word for a little bitty sticky. Um, you can speed it up a little bit by sticking them in the refrigerator, but you really don't have to, so that one's totally up to you. But I do suggest that you give it a few more taps, and that's just to get out any air bubbles you have. Okay, so we will be back once these have set. Alright, now that these have set, I can touch them and they're not sticky. I'm just going to turn them over. You can kind of stretch your mold a little bit and loosen them. But usually they kind of just pop out or you can lightly push. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want to smash the pitcher in the front. Alright, once you've got them all out, you might have this where you've got kind of a lip on them. Just pull that off. It happens when you overfill to give them a cleaner edge. You can also take one of your tools and just kind of smooth them out. All right, so I've got several different uh, size of paint brushes because each of his faces on this mold is different. So some of them have larger mouths and eyes. So I'm just going to take my black food color but I've just got a little bit in here and use my paintbrushes and fill in his facial features. Now I've talked about this before, I prefer food color, but you can use the uh, food safe markers for this. You can use the, uh, the little store bought um, stuff that's like a gel that comes in a little squeeze thing, but they're not as much control as the paint brushes, so I prefer those. Then when you get to smaller pieces or areas, just switch to a smaller brush. His nose has some really, really tiny holes there. So I'm having to use my smallest paint brush. His mouth is not all that big either. And you can see that they paint really well on there. So you're just going to do all your little faces. And this will take me a few minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, so that's it for our episode today. I hope that you enjoyed making your little Jack Skellingtons as much as I did. Don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to see all seven days of our Halloween special. And the recipes for everything are in the cookbook or on the website. So have a great day.